Hey there, I am doing another Facebook Live video, Facebook Live answering questions about emotions and faith. Uh, today I've got a question that I've been asked by quite a number of people that I want to talk about, and I'm going to get set up for that here just a moment. I'm going to quick grab the link from this Facebook Live, and I'm going to share it out on my other uh, feeds so that other people can find it. And uh, hopefully then we'll get um, a few people uh, joining in I for this fake Facebook Live uh, so that they can be a part of it. Um, Yes, so uh, shortly I'm going to start answering this question. Um, it is the question that I've been asked the most about emotions and faith, and so I tackled it in a blog post, which I'll be referring to, and I'm going to answer some direct questions about it here in just a minute as soon as I finish sharing out this Facebook Live link with my Facebook author page. Uh, you can follow me there, Mark Allen Shelsky, um, or uh, on Twitter as well. Um, here's the link going out to my author page and I'm going to send it out on my Twitter page and then we'll get to it. So if you're hanging around while I do this housekeeping, thanks for being patient and we'll get started answering this question in just a minute. Can't talk and type at the same time. I don't know if you have that problem. Here we go. All right, link is shared. Link is shared. It's going out, and uh, now I can uh, get my attention back here to you. All right. So today's uh, Facebook Live question is going to be about anxiety. Uh, this is a big one that um, people have asked me a lot about. But first, the reason I'm doing this Facebook Live is because 18 months ago or so, this book came out, The Wisdom of Your Heart. I wrote it and uh, had this huge, uh, amazing dream come true of being able to publish a book and see it on the bookshelves. And that's amazing. But um, even more exciting to me is hearing from people that have found the book to be a real help to them. That's the best part, to be able to be a help in someone else's journey. That's what I long for. And I'm doing this because not only did the book come out 18 months ago, but this very next week, the audiobook version is coming out. Uh, and that will be available. And I know there's a whole group of people who like audiobooks better than reading uh, Dead Tree books. And so I'm excited to get this out and available for people so that they can learn more about emotional discipleship and inner life growth and uh, the healing that happens when we learn how to listen for the wisdom that's in our emotions. Now, I am doing this Facebook Live because I have the responsibility as the author to promote my book but I hate self-promotion. It's really painful and awkward and I feel dumb doing it. And that's crazy because I believe in the message of this book, not only because uh, it really impacted my life uh, and deeply, deeply changed me. Hey, Joel, nice to see you. Um, but also because I've heard from many people that the book has been a huge help in their life. And so I believe in this message, but it's really hard to promote myself. So um, I'm a good explainer. I like explaining stuff. And so I'm doing Facebook Lives to explain, to answer questions about emotions and faith. And so here's today's question. Um, it is summarized uh, in an email I got from a guy named Errol, uh, awesome name Errol, uh, Errol H. He wrote, I always wrestle with feeling anxious or fearful about circumstances and how that squares with my faith or lack thereof. And he's not the only one who asked that question. I had many, many people uh, when I asked, when I sent out the email and asked, what are your questions about emotions and faith? I had many people respond asking about this very thing. And the versions of the question were like this, is my anxiety a sin? Does feeling worry mean that my faith is weak? Uh, does feeling anxiety mean that I don't really trust God? All kinds of questions around that same neighborhood wondering about anxiety and faith. And so that is the question I'm going to answer here in just a moment. 
one more promotional thing. If you hang around for this whole Facebook Live, it's going to be about 12 minutes, I think. If you hang around for the whole thing, at the very end, um, I will be giving away uh, one free copy of the audiobook. So stick around to the end, and if you're here at the end of the Facebook Live, then you will have a chance to get that free copy. All right, so today's question, um, is my anxiety a sin? Does feeling worry mean my faith is weak? All right, so the first thing is, that's a super common opinion. Uh, if you Google search uh, this question, you will see lots of blog posts that say exactly that. The most common response online is, if you're feeling worry, that means you're not trusting God enough. If you're feeling anxiety, that means you really haven't placed your whole life's confidence in Jesus, and you need to just trust God more. I disagree, 100% disagree. And in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to give you three reasons why I think that's not true. All right, first reason. Reason number one, faith and anxiety are two completely different kinds of things. They are different experiences, and there's no reason to compare them. Here's what I mean. Faith, at its core, is an act of will. Faith is an act of will. It's a choice we make, and it has to do with the state of a relationship. Uh, faith is essentially trust, and if we think about trust in human relationships, then we know how that works. We see somebody, we meet somebody, we have some life experiences with them, and we evaluate what we know about that person to decide whether or not we consider that person dependable, whether or not we believe they have our good at heart, whether or not we deem them safe. And if we decide that they meet that standard for us, then we confer trust in them. In our minds and hearts, we designate them as a the kind of person that we believe is trustworthy. Now, faith in God is really the same kind of thing. We evaluate based on our experience with God, based on what we've learned about God in scripture or other religious teaching, based on um, our own backstory, based on how we believe God's showing up in our lives, we decide if we think God's trustworthy. Essentially, followers of Jesus, we decide, is Jesus a worthy Lord to follow? Well, that's a choice we make. It's will. Like, if you grew up in an evangelical Christian church, then, then that should be a no-brainer for you, because you know, in evangelical Christianity, we're always asking people to make a choice to follow Jesus, right? Faith is about a choice, an act of will. On the other hand, anxiety is an emotional response. Anxiety is an emotion. It's something that happens within our emotional response system. It's largely autonomous. Anxiety is a low-grade version of fear. And fear is the emotion that we feel when we perceive that we are under threat, right? When something in our outer world or inner circumstances feels like a threat to us. Hey, Calvin, great to have you. Um, when something in our outer world or inner circumstances feels threatening to us, we have an emotional response to it, and the name we have for that emotional response is fear. And anxiety is just a low-grade version of that. So, uh, when you feel something, when you have an emotional response to something that's in your world or in your inner life, that is not a statement about your level of faith. Emotions are neutral. Emotions are neither good nor bad. They are just a response we have in our inner system. They just happen to us. They're indicators, kind of like the, uh, the emergency light on the dashboard of our car. Emotions tell us there's something we need to pay attention to. Emotions are not moral failings, all right? Get that. They're not weaknesses. They're not moral failings. Hey, David, glad to have you join in. Um, and so if we understand that emotions are not moral failings, that they're just indicators, that there's something we need to pay attention to, then what that tells us about anxiety is that anxiety is not a moral failure. Anxiety is one of those warning lights that's telling us, hey, there's something I feel nervous about. There's something that feels like a threat. I need to pay attention to it. So this is the first reason the first reason why I do not believe anxiety is a sign of weak faith or a sin. The first reason is faith is an act of will conferring trust on God. Anxiety is an emotional response. It's completely possible to decide that you trust God as far as you are able to trust God at that point and still encounter circumstances that trigger anxiety for you. They're not related. 
That's the first reason. All right, here's the second reason. And before I give you the second reason, remember, at the end of this video, um, maybe about eight minutes or so from now, I'm going to be giving away a free copy of the audiobook for the wisdom of your heart. So stick around all the way to the end, and you might get that free copy of the audiobook, okay? So here's the second reason. The second reason that I do not believe anxiety is a sign of weak faith or sin is this. Um, no matter how strong you are in your faith, no matter how mature you become, no matter how much you grow, there will always be unknowns in your life. Here, here's what I mean. Um, anxiety, I said already, is a low-grade form of fear. And fear is the emotion we feel when we feel like we're under threat. And one of the most common things that feels like a threat to us is the unknown. Right? For many, many people, anxiety is what we feel when we're facing the unknown. Right? So think about this. If you are growing in your faith, and for the sake of this discussion, let's assume that growing in your faith means coming to trust God more and more. Okay, maybe in more parts of your life, in deeper parts of your life. If you are growing in your faith, coming to trust God more and more, that's great. But here's the thing about maturing. As you grow, you're going to face new kinds of uncertainty, right? As you grow, that does not mean uncertainty is going to go away. It means that you're going to face new kinds of uncertainty. So here's an example. Um, earlier in my life, when I was a younger adult, I had a ton of really visceral anxiety around finances. I had profound stress about paying the bills, uh, when I bought a house, about whether or not I was going to be able to pay my mortgage. Uh, sometimes things would happen and it would keep me up at night and I would feel that gut clenching anxiety around this feeling of fear that I wasn't going to have enough, that what would happen if I didn't pay the bills, then, then you know what would happen to me and to my family, and I had a lot of anxiety around it. Now, you might say, was there a faith component to that? Well, sure. I was struggling to believe that God would provide for me or that God would be with me uh, when I faced those difficult financial circumstances. Okay, so time passes, and over several years, I wrestle with God about this. I pray about it. I journal about it. I go through different circumstances, and a lot of pain surfaced, and I had to come face to face with the, the reality that I was struggling with trusting God in this particular aspect of my life. Well, then I went through some really difficult financial circumstances, and I learned that I'm still okay. I learned that my family's still okay. I learned that God still seems to be in the mix of my life. And so because I went through those difficult circumstances, and it seemed like God was still with me, my trust grew. And so now years later, a decade, 15 years later, I'm really not that anxious in the same way I used to be about finances. I've been through ups, I've been through downs, I've faced really difficult circumstances financially, but I don't feel that same gut visceral reaction of anxiety that I used to. So yay, that's growth, right? Like I trust God more in that part of my life. Amazing. But guess what? I have new things that I'm encountering that I never experienced before, and I have and I'm experiencing anxiety in those new things, right? Because anxiety is very often about fear of the unknown. And no matter how spiritually mature you become, no matter how strong you are in your faith, you will always have new unknowns to face because growing means you're pushing out of your comfort zone, right? You're trying new things. You're facing new challenges that you've never faced before. That is what growing means. And so, hey, Mark, nice to see you. And so uh, no matter how mature you become, no matter how much you grow in your faith, there's always going to be new areas to practice trusting God that you've not had to do before, which means you're always going to be open to the possibility of anxiety. So that's the second reason that I don't think anxiety is a sign of weak faith or sin. Like as you grow, you're going to continually be pressing into new things, and that means you're going to always have the opportunity for anxiety. Anxiety and faith are not, uh, are not directly related. All right. Here is the third reason, the third reason why I believe anxiety is not a sign of weak faith or sin. Before I tell you this, before I give you this third reason, just remember that uh, at the very end of this Facebook Live, which will be four or five minutes from now, I'm going to be giving away a free copy of the audiobook uh, for the wisdom of your heart. But you have to be here present in the, in the live broadcast to get it. So hang out to the very end and you'll have the opportunity to get that. Okay, reason number three that I do not believe anxiety is a sign of weak faith or sin. Here it is. Lots of people of faith. 
lots of them report feeling anxiety in their life as a regular experience. We start with the Bible. People like Abraham and Elijah and David and Timothy, they all report experiences that today we would call anxiety. All right, so people in the Bible, people that are in the Hebrews 11 Hall of Fame experienced anxiety. And God was still working with them. God was still present in their journey. The fact that they had experiences of anxiety did not mean that God was done with them. Uh, second, I'm uh, a big fan of uh, Christian history, reading biographies of influential Christians and thinkers and theologians all the way back to the early church fathers. And I will tell you that when people of faith write about their experience of God, and their personal relationship with God, their spiritual journey, it is rare that they do not talk about feeling anxiety. It happens all of the time. Uh, books that I've read about the lives of people like Augustine and Martin Luther and Dietrich Bonhoeffer and Mother Teresa, uh, people like this talk about experiencing anxiety, sometimes really deep, almost crippling anxiety. And that wasn't told in the context of falling away. That was happening in the midst of their journey of faith. In fact, there's an experience that's been written about by lots of Christians, uh, most famously St. John of the Cross, writing about the experience called the Dark Night of the Soul. There's an experience where people whose hearts are Godward, who want to please God, still feel a great deal of this kind of deep emotional pain or anxiety even in the middle of their journey of faith. And so when we look at these reports from people, whether they're scriptural reports or, or biographies or people that we know who are mature in their faith, the fact is that anxiety is a normal human experience. And if you're a normal human, you're probably going to feel anxiety from time to time. Okay, so that means if it's a normal human experience and it happened in the lives of all of these people of faith, that means it's not connected. The fact that you're growing in your faith does not mean that you'll never feel anxiety. All right, now I want to make one caveat that's really important here. I'm talking about anxiety that comes up from time to time, the worry that we all feel from time to time that most of us experience. I'm not talking about a persistent oppressive anxiety. If you live with a persistent oppressive anxiety, that may indicate that there's something deeper that needs attention. For example, it's pretty common that a persistent overwhelming anxiety is a symptom of PTSD. So if you are a trauma survivor, if you are a first responder, if you were in the military, if you're somebody who's experienced some kind of catastrophe and the wound of that has never been really deeply attended to, you've never found healing, then it's a, it's a good chance that you will feel a persistent anxiety. And that is a, a red a light indicating that there's uh, some work that needs to be done, some healing that needs to be done uh, in your life. And I would really encourage you to get the help that you need uh, to be able to work that through because you don't have to live under a persistent cloud of anxiety. All right, three reasons uh, to uh, my three reasons for believing that anxiety is not a sign of weak faith or sin. That was the original question from Errol H. Uh, asking, is my anxiety sin? Does the feeling worry mean that my faith is weak? I say no. I say they're not related for three reasons. Number one, faith and anxiety are two different kinds of things. Faith is an act of will. Anxiety is an emotional response. You can choose to follow God. You can choose to pursue God with your life and still have the emotional response of anxiety when you have circumstances in your life that trigger fear. That's normal. Second reason anxiety is not a good measure of your faith is because if you're growing, you're always going to be pushing out of your comfort zone. And if you're pushing out of your comfort zone, you're going to be facing the uncertain. And if you're facing the uncertain, you're going to feel anxiety, right? So if you're growing, there's a good chance you're going to face fear and anxiety. So uh, it doesn't that's not a reflection on your faith. And then the third reason that I uh, do not believe anxiety is a sign of weak faith or sin is because lots and lots and lots of people of faith all the way back through history, all the way back through scripture, report feeling anxiety in their life. It's a normal human experience. If you're a normal human, you probably experience anxiety from time to time. All right, that's the answer to today's question. Um, we're gonna do this free book giveaway here in just a moment. Um, this Facebook Live broadcast is brought to you by The Wisdom of Your Heart, Discovering the God-Given Power and Purpose of Your Emotions. Um, this book came out about 18 months ago and I'm super thrilled to 
let you know that the audiobook is coming out right now. It's going to be available uh, on Amazon and Audible.com and iTunes um, by the end of this, uh, by the middle of this next week on all three of those places. If you want to understand your emotions better, grow in your ability to handle them, then I want to encourage you to pick up this book. If you want to be reminded about it coming out, you can subscribe at my website, www.markalanchelsky.com forward slash sub, and uh, you'll get a max of two emails a month uh, with new blog posts, podcast posts, and I will be sending an email to those people when the audiobook is available. All right, so now uh, giveaway time. I have a free copy of the audiobook. Thank you, uh, Mark. I'm glad that it's helpful. Um, that's the thing that's most exciting to me about all of this. Um, I'm going to give away a copy of the free audiobook uh, right now, and here's how this is going to work. Um, the audiobook uh, via audible.com. It's a $20 value, um, and so here's what uh, what we're going to do. If you are here in the broadcast right now, and I see that there are uh, some eyeball counts on my meter, if you're here in the broadcast right now, um, Write a question, any question at all, about emotions or emotions and faith in the comments. And that is how you enter. So uh, I'm going to stall here for a minute and talk about a couple of things. But you can write any question at all about emotions or emotions and faith or the inner life or uh, growing spiritual maturity, anything like that at all. Write a question in the comments. I'll see your name. And after this broadcast is over, every person who writes a question goes in a drawing. And I will draw one of those. And then that person will get a free copy of the audiobook to the wisdom of your heart, um, and I will reach out to you via Facebook to deliver that to you. Okay, so right now, uh, take a moment and think of a question um, and write that question in the comments, all right? So um, I'm going to be doing another one of these Facebook Lives later this week, I think, and I'll be doing one for sure next week, maybe one more beyond that. And so um, I've had people email me questions. I have had people send me questions via private messenger, and I'm trying to uh, answer those to be helpful to people. And also, if this topic of anxiety is a big one for you, uh, still stalling so you can write your questions. Um, if the topic of anxiety is a big one for you, I wrote a blog post about this very topic. It's at my blog right now. It's the first blog post uh, there. So www.markallenshelsky.com and you'll see it as the first or second entry. Uh, and it's called, You Can Meet God in Your Anxiety. All right, so that is... Uh, that is today's Facebook Live. I'm going to archive it and put it up on YouTube so that it'll be available. If you found this helpful and you want to share it with someone else, you can do that. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with me for these 15 minutes. Uh, leave your question in the comments here. I'll leave it open for about five minutes or so after I'm done. And then I will do a drawing for everyone who left a question in the comments. Now, one note, this is really only applicable to the live broadcast. So if you're watching this video later, whether it's in the Facebook archive or whether it is um, on YouTube. If you're watching it later, I won't be doing it live, which means you're not getting in the drawing. So right now, uh, right now, if you want to be in the drawing for a free audiobook version of the wisdom of your heart.com, uh, the wisdom of your heart, there's the book, uh, write your question in the comments. Uh, I'm going to leave it open for about four more minutes after I sign off and then I'll do the drawing and I'll reach out to the person who I drew uh, via Facebook to give you your copy of the audiobook. So that's it. Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, until next time, next video, whether it is a podcast or my next Facebook Live, don't forget this most important thing. You are loved, you are known, and you are not alone. All right.